Okay, she's uh, she looks very nice. She and looks very nice. <laughs> uh, I think this is a, one of the many, many TV movies and projects Kiss was involved in. I want to see Kiss. They're in the background there. Kiss, the awesome rock band there with, they the, are. with the makeup and all that stuff. Founded in 1972, Pete, uh, our next guest, Peter Chris, was there. Founding member of Kiss, played with him until 1981. The drummer, Peter Chris, uh, welcome to Good Day. He's New York. known as Cat. <laughs> you see him, Cat. The makeup, and this is before you guys ever even bothered taking off the makeup. Peter Chris is with us. Uh, he's still Thank a musician you. and Thank an actor. You. He also was afflicted with something that we're quite shocked by, actually. Welcome, sir. Thank you for having me. This is great. I love you guys. I watch you. All the time. Oh, so. thank, thank you. you. Well, pretty cool. We're, we're honored to have you here, <laughs> and I, I didn't realize that you are a breast cancer survivor. Yes, going on eight years. Congratulations. Uh, you feel okay? Terrific. Uh, I was blessed. Uh, this is Dr. Uh, Alexander, Alexander Switzel, Switzel, by the way. Doctor, who, thank you. Who did the surgery on me, and uh, this man is so cool. I mean, so his tenacity, his <laughs> his brilliance his because I was misdiagnosed when I first found so what out. happened did you find where, where do we a, start from? Yeah, let's go there. From, the from the beginning male, yeah. male breast cancer Let, doctor real quick Please. a lot of us are not aware that this even happens we have hear about female breast cancer all the time how common is male breast cancer it really makes up only one percent just about one percent of all cancers all breast cancers that were identified the problem you see is that it is such a low number that most people are not following it. Man, men don't usually find it early diagnosis and no mammograms are done. We're not usually seeing doctors on a regular basis. Men don't characteristically do that. And so by the time it gets diagnosed, classically, it's at a later stage. Right, stage for stage, the survival is the same, but it's often and higher And so stage. much awareness about female breast cancer, Correct. virtually none about male breast cancer. Right. So Peter, did you find a lump? What happened? Oh God. Uh, I know my body well. I wore spandex for 50 years. <laughs> you get to know everything about you. And for a joke, I went to the gym, came home, uh, took a shower, and I touched my left nodule, my, my nipple, and it really hurt bad, like not usually. And I thought, OK, lifted the weights wrong. I'm a man. What a man now. We, we, mm -hmm. We're men. So I didn't think much of it, but it still bothered me. And I felt like a little red light, but not a big one. At the time, my wife was also going through a cancer battle. And I mentioned it to her, and she happened to be going to her doctor. And while we were there, she mentioned to her doctor, would you just look at my husband? He's got a thing in his boob. And so sure enough, she did. She said, well, if you were my husband, I would send you over to see the great Dr. Alex Whittle. At New at, York Presbyterian. At New York Presbyterian. I'm thinking, but that's cancer for breast. You know, I'm, I'm a guy. Guys don't get that. Uh, I was very ignorant about it, didn't know anything, clueless. So but what happened next? Radiation, ma a mastectomy? No, went, went over to Alex, checked me out, had to go get a, uh, a biopsy, I guess. Okay. And so I went to a doctor in Jersey misdiagnosed, got a call, you're cool. Wow, great, okay, uh, week went by. If not for his going further, looking deeper, his brilliance of, I'm not just gonna, you know, I'm not accepting this, I'm gonna do more about, that. I love this man to death. With the, with the hands of God, through him, it's nothing You're alive, because like, it was- I'm alive. Because it was malignant? Well, it was it had to get out of me. And so he me. says, do you want the good news or bad news? And I'm sitting on a Saturday, I'm gone. When doctors tell you yeah. good or bad news, you know. I said, well, give me the bad news. He goes, you have breast cancer. And I said, you're kidding me. He goes, no, no, you do, Peter. And the good news? And the great news is, is you caught it. Um, I wish my patients would come in like you have come mm. in. You got it. I could, it's um, no chemo, none of that I had to go through. I went right back in to see him. We removed it, and I've been great. So, did he have a lumpectomy, mastectomy? What did what did? What Actually, did he had something called a nipple sparing mastectomy, which, interestingly enough, is something that's revolutionizing the treatment for women with breast cancer now in terms of doing skin sparing and nipple sparing procedures. So, a lot of men have come over and say, "Well, wait a minute, if they're allowed to have these skin sparing procedures, why can't I have?" Because traditionally, we haven't bothered to do very much except remove all the breasts because there isn't a lot of breast tissue in terms of just cosmetically to deal with. So, so uh, actually Peter had a, a nipple sparing mastectomy and has done very well. So what should guys do? I mean, self exams, uh, what, ask your doctor, because apparently doctors aren't even that aware of it, apart from you, sir. Uh, what, what should be done? I think uh, for me, you know, I have a joke about, but 
your wife or your girlfriend check you and you check her. It could get interesting. I think, I, no, I'm not. There's a rock star. <laughs> I make a joke, well, yeah. <laughs> They'll never go away. But no, I, I think, you know, you should get in a shower like a woman does. And, and we don't know, again, I, you know, men are still out there about this. There's no walks. There's no, at times I get a little upset because I go, well, Jesus, you know, there's a million commercials for a million different illnesses, but not one guy comes up on the TV and goes, hey, I'm Joe, I've had breast, male breast cancer, and I'm a survivor. Nothing. No magazines, yeah. there's nothing. This is my battle. This is what perturbs me that I don't see anything as I keep going year to year fighting this, and I even mentioned it to Alex. I'm like, am I getting through? But then I get the email, as we mentioned, soldiers, Marines, yeah. and I'm hundreds that are finding it now. And it's a big issue, actually, so in the a, military community. So it's getting community. bigger and bigger now. I'm told it's 1% of men. Right. Well, My breasts are getting bigger and bigger and bigger, too. What? I know that, 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 uh, that reduction. That has nothing to do. I know it doesn't, but I'll be checking. <laughs> I think if you don't, it's only going to get higher. If it was your father, son, or brother, or uncle, you'd really take that and go, whoa. My uncle actually died. Yeah, and that cancer. sometimes he it seems like yeah. when it gets through the skies, because we don't pay attention, and I think we need to. We need education and early detection, we'll say. Now, life. tomorrow night you have a big event together, right? Yes, he's What's getting What's going on? That? So Please. tomorrow night, the Cancer <laughs> Research and Treatment Fund is an organization that's been almost around for 50 years, one of the early organizations that devoted a lot of funding to basic clinical research as well as laboratory research for lymphoid malignancies, leukemias, bloodborne, now shifting over towards things like breast cancer and prostate. Dr. And Swistle, very, you'll be honored tomorrow night. That's fantastic. Hey, you missed a uh, lifetime achievement. That's are fantastic. You, are, are there tickets still available? Ooh, yeah, people tickets are still available. We'd love to are see you Are you performing all. tomorrow night? No, I'm getting a survivor award. I'll be oh. happy to get that's that. nice. Uh, you keep up with it. I'm on a stage with the great. So that is I'm, great. I'm, I'm so proud and honored to know this man and become friends with him and his lovely wife, Pat. And, uh, Can I ask you, back in the day, why did you guys choose to wear the makeup? We're, you know, we were four guys from New York. We loved Broadway. We loved circuses. We thought, what would it be like, not just four guys to go up in bell bottoms and sing for two hours and bore you. We wanted an event. Yeah. We wanted to blow the theater up blow ourselves up if that's what it took to get to get your money, your three dollars <laughs> back then. We really wanted to give the kids their money's worth of a great event. It was more than a show, it was an event we yeah. felt. We were showing, you know, we were flying, the drums were levitating, bombs were there's nothing been, ever been like it and we've been copying for the last fifty years. So. What what was it like a boy from Brooklyn wearing spandex? My dad didn't like it, but my, <laughs> my mom was pretty cool. <laughs> hey, great book, by the way, Peter Chris put out a while back, Makeup to Break Up. Uh, all Kiss questions and Peter Chris questions you have answered in that book. Sir, thank you very much. And, thank uh, you guys so, so glad much. you made Dr. it through Swistle, this. Dr. Swistle, thank you so much. Congratulations on your award tomorrow night. Hall of Fame dinner at the Essex House at 6 o'clock. We'll put the information on on how you can support this worthy event on our website, myfoxny.com. Sounds like a plan. Is that good? Thank you very much. God bless you, See guys, you guys for having us. You too. Good stuff.